Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're diving into one of the coolest features of Creality Print 6, variable layer height. Now, whether you're a seasoned 3D printing pro or just starting out, this tool can seriously up your game when it comes to print quality and speed. So let's break it down and show you how to use variable layer height to create some really great prints. Now, I found this picture online. The person posting it was new to 3D printing and was looking for some help. This problem is easily solved by using the variable layer height feature in Creality Print. So what exactly is variable layer height? Well, in simple terms, it lets you change the height of the layers in your print dynamically instead of having a constant layer height throughout the entire print. You can make certain areas of your print shorter or taller based on the detail required. Pretty cool, right? So let's take a look at how this works. But first, I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay is famous for high quality PCBs and assemblies, but did you know that they also offer a wide range of maker services like CNC cutting, injection molding, and 3D printing? Simply upload your design, select your choice of material, and click Submit. Looking for a project to work on? Check out PCBWay's shared project portal. Prototype the easy way with PCBWay. With variable layer height, you can optimize for both speed and detail. For example, if you have a complex detailed model, you can set finer layers in the area where precision matters and thicker layers where speed is more important. Let's go ahead and jump into Creality Print 6 and take a look at using this feature. Okay, I was able to locate the model. I found it on printables. It's called uh, Flexi Holding Cat Print in Place. And it's by 3D Flex Seeds. That's a pretty cool name. Okay, so I downloaded the model and I have it loaded in on Creality Print. And I could tell that this is not the way it was printed in the picture, the way I found it. Uh, it looks like it was scaled up. So let's go ahead and change the scale on this. I'm going to go ahead and change it to 200%. That looks more reasonable. Okay, so I'm using, everything is default. Um, I don't have anything customized in here. And we're just gonna slice it and print it. Okay, so here we have our model. Uh, yeah, it's got the brim now. So yeah, this would everything looks about what I saw in the picture. Let's send this to the printer and we'll take a look on the other side and we'll make some adjustments, see what we can do to clean this up. Okay, the first thing you'll notice is that this has been print scaled up 200%. The reason for that is the original model at 100%. Uh you still got the problem with the layers. Not a not a big deal that we blew it up. I wanted to compare apples to apples on this one. And with auto brim turned on, you just don't get a brim on the small size. On the large size, the auto brim does kick in. Uh, and I wanted to match what the original poster on the internet had said or showed. So we really don't need the brim for this. It's just one of those things I would have turned off. Someone told them to separate the brim three to five millimeters, which in that case, it becomes a skirt. Uh, skirt might, might help. Uh, I would maybe do a skirt with three loops, but that's not the topic of this video. What we're looking at is the stepping on each one of these sections. Uh, we got it here at the tip, at the top of the tail, the base of the tail, down here on the back of the legs. We got it up here on the paws and we have it on the head. And what we're going to do is use Creality's variable layer height to reduce those, make them so that they're not as noticeable. And we're going to see if we can't reduce the print time while we do this. So let's jump back into Creality Print and see what we can do. Okay, let's see what we can do about smoothing this cat out. Now, the first thing I want to do before I get started is get rid of this brim. So I'm going to come over here to my processes and under others, I'm coming to brim and I'm setting it from auto to no brim. I don't need it for this model. I am going to change my skirt loops to three. 
and that should be more than enough to give us layer adhesion for the our bed adhesion for this print now we're going to go back to prepare and we're going to smooth this cat out let's go ahead and give it a click and we'll notice up here at the top that there is an icon with a series of horizontal lines all stacked on top of each other that is our variable layer height icon so let's go ahead and give that a click and right away we notice our model has turned gray it almost looks like it was sliced but not really um, the reason for that is we are seeing where those stepped like layers are it's it's just indicating what we're trying to smooth out over here on the right side of our screen we have a new bar it's all white gray actually it matches the color of our model and you notice as i move my mouse up and down it there's a yellow line on the model that moves along with it what's that showing is where we are on the model what the current layer height is and you'll notice everything is showing me at its point two which makes sense because when we go to our layer height it's set at point two whether it's the top or the bottom of the model we are at point two millimeters for our layer height now we have this dialog box and it has three settings on it we got quality slash speed smooth and keep minimum which we'll talk about last on the keep minimum our quality slash speed if i move the slider more towards the quality side we're going to get more detail on our model but it's going to take longer to print if i move it towards the speed yeah we're still going to get some variable layers but it's going to print faster so it depends on how much detail you want to have i'm going to leave it at 0.5 for now and i'm going to go ahead and we're hitting apply right away you notice we got a lot of new colors we got some dark green light green pea green white we got some peach in there let's see what's going on with those colors as i come back over here to the right side with this vertical bar we see the same colors over here when i go to the dark green areas you notice my layer height is now 0 0.08 that's pretty cool i like that when we come down here to the white area we're looking at 0.195 or 0.2 for that matter which is our original layer height we move down here to the peach. We're looking at layer heights of, I saw 0.24 or 0.25 in there. Uh, there's 0.248. So where it's peach down here at the bottom of the model, uh, we're looking at 0.28 or uh, 0.25 rather. We get into the white, we're looking closer to 0.2. The lighter green, we're looking at 0.15. And the dark green, we're in the area of 0.08. So what's happening is it's using bigger line, layer lines where detail is not required, but putting smaller layer lines where we do want more detail. That's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, it takes a lot of work out of our hands. Now, when we come up here where we see more green towards the top, right where that green and white match, uh, we're going from 0.174, and then we're at 0 0.15, 0 0.13, one two and it's working its way down now that's pretty good um but let's just say we wanted more detail up here in the area where it's green the first thing i want you to notice is i'm going to click up here in the green area and i'm going to hold my mouse button down and i'm going to just slide it up and you notice how everything's becoming a darker shade of green i'm adding detail to that area well i just made all of that everything up here is 0.8 well yeah it's going to take away a lot of that stepping but we're going to have one massive step where we go from 0.19 down to 0 0.09 in this case so how do we smooth that out well you can hit the apply button so i hit apply and now you notice some of the other colors went away and we're going to get a smoother transaction we're, transition we're going from 0.18 1.6 one five and so on until we hit the point two eight now i'm going to change this i'm going to hit reset on this and now we're back to where we started and i'm going to hit apply again because let's do the, i'm going to come down and i'm going to add a lot more detail down here at the bottom again by going to the bar on the right side 
and holding my left mouse button down and I'm going to really change that up. Well, now I put a bunch of detail down here where I don't need it. How do I get rid of that? Right click on the bar. And the slower you move it, the more detail I'm taking out of it. And vice versa, if I'm holding the bar down, the slower I move it, uh, the more detail it's going to put there. So I'm going to just, I'm going to make it dark red. Just for, just for my own entertainment purposes. Okay, so here you can see, we went from, uh, I think we had 0.25 down here. Now I have layers of 0.3, but notice I'm not exceeding 0.3. Not a big deal. It will be later. Um, I'm going to just see if I can make this a little bit darker. Seems like I'm missing something in there, but maybe not. Okay, so if I went too far with that, I can always go back and just add more detail and I'll move it pretty quick. And there we go. I'm back to my layer height of 0.2. But if I have it at 0.3 down here, it saves me time on the model itself. The problem is if I go too high, I'm going to start running into problem areas right here at the top of the paw on the front and on the back. So I think I'm okay where I'm at. Um, Everything's looking good there to get the transitions nice and smooth. Again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit apply. And I can hit apply to smoothness many times as I want. I just clicked it three times. Um, downside to that is you can actually drive up the time it takes to print your model. I'm going to leave this where it's at for now. And we're going to print this out in a few minutes, a few seconds. And... Uh, we'll see what we got. But before I do that, I'm going to turn that off. And I want to show you how to change the set minimum button. So over here on the upper left-hand corner where our printer setting is, go ahead and click uh, the edit preset for your printer. And then come over and click extruder 1. And down here, second... Uh, area down it's layer height limits our minimum is 0 0.08 our maximum is 0 0.03 do those numbers sound familiar yeah when we're into our variable layer height smallest layer we have is a 0 0.8 did have until i took it away with smoothing and our maximum that we had was a 0 0.3 even though i don't have the keep minimum set uh we just happened to never exceed that you can exceed it. It's not a good idea to, but you could. You could actually go back and change that uh, 0 0.08 to 0 0.05 in your printer setting. But typically, I would want to keep my minimums, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and keep it that way. That's up to you to decide what you want to do there. Now, I'm also pretty happy with what I'm seeing, so I'm going to go ahead and click this. I'm going to slice it and print, and we'll take a look at it on the other side. That looks a lot better, a lot smoother, a lot cleaner. I really like what I see here. And like I said, it looks pretty good. I mean, yeah, you see some at the tip here a little bit, but let's bring the original back in and set it next to it, and you can see the difference. So here we have our... Our new one that we used variable layer heights on, and over here it was the standard. And you just look at those steps, and you can see how it affected the edges. Um, each one of these sections, there's a lot of stepping, but here on the new one, it's looking a lot cleaner, a lot smoother. Um, down here on the tail, originally we had a, we had some uh, steps here. The variable layer height uh, is clean that up same thing up here on the head and the paw area you look at the paws versus uh old versus new overall i think the creality print six variable layer height has really cleaned this model up i like it now a few tips for success with the variable layer height make sure your model is designed to take advantage of the different layer heights Organic shapes work best. Keep an eye 
on your overhangs and steep angles. Variable layer height can sometimes eh, create issues if the transition between the layers is too steep. Three, when using multiple colors or materials, all objects on the build plate must have the same layer height or the prime tower just won't work. And finally, tree supports are not yet compatible with var variable layer height. So that's a wrap on the variable layer height in Creality Print 6. It's a fantastic feature that gives you more control over your prints and helps you optimize for both quality and speed. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know in the comments. Smash the bell so you'll be alerted to new tips and tricks in the future. Live your life one layer at a time. And if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe.